Essex, Connecticut, first settled in 1664 and originally known as Pettipog, is the quintessential New England village. Nestled on the banks of the Connecticut River, it is a nautical brigadoon set halfway between New York and Boston. But things were not always so peaceful here. In the spring of 2014, with fifes and drums and a rediscovered sense of community, the village marked the 200th anniversary of the British raid on Essex, a battle which brought the War of 1812 to its very doorstep. The Commemoration Day parade and events attracted spectators and participants from near and far, including a return of British troops storming the waterfront, overwhelming the town's defenses and reminding one and all of the deep-rooted history that still lingers here. On April 7, 1814, at the height of the War of 1812, a British raiding force of 136 sailors and marines rode up the Connecticut River from warships anchored in Long Island Sound. They had come to burn the privateers of Pettipaw. By the time it was over, 24 hours later, the enemy had put the torch to no less than 27 vessels. It was the single greatest maritime loss of the war. Yet, within a few decades, the British raid on Essex had faded into folklore. It had become a forgotten battle, a lost chapter in the maritime history of our state and nation. During the War of 1812, the British blockade of Long Island Sound had virtually shut down commerce along the Connecticut coast, forcing seafaring villages like Essex to turn to the building and equipping of privately owned, federally licensed warships known as privateers. Six miles up the river and protected by the Great Saybrook Bar at its mouth, Essex seemed immune to British attack. But on the night of April 7th, the raiding force, led by Captain Richard Coote, rode up the river in six heavily armed ships' boats under cover of darkness. After storming the fort on Saybrook Point, the British reached Pettipog at 3.30 on the morning of the 8th. Following a shootout with the outmanned and outgunned local militia, the British took the town. Sir, my name is Richard Coote, commander in His Majesty's Royal Navy. We are here on a mission, and I have a sufficient force, as you can see, to accomplish it. We're here to burn all the shipping in and about Pettipog Harbor. If you desist from any further violence, I promise that all public property and buildings will be left alone and secure. However, if you bring any other violence to us, we will burn the town to the ground. With the village secured, the British set about burning the ships in the harbor. At 10 o'clock the next morning, they headed back down the river with two captured American privateers, the Eagle and the Young Anaconda. At 12.30, the Anaconda ran aground a mile and a quarter below the village, forcing Coote to anchor the Eagle nearby. Seeing the gathering American forces on the bluffs to the south, he decided to burn the grounded vessel and remain at anchor in the river to wait for the cover of darkness to continue his escape. As local militia maintained sporadic musket fire from the riverbank, American forces began to mobilize from Killingworth, Lyme, Saybrook, and New London. At sunset, an American cannon reached the British position and opened fire, killing two Marines as the British burned the Eagle and pulled away in their boats. The black of night now offered protection as they ran the gauntlet between the bluffs, where over 500 American troops attempted to prevent their escape. The river echoed with cannon and musket fire, yet despite the best efforts of the defenders, by 9 p.m. it was all over. British had reached the safety of their warships at the mouth of the river. Nearly 200 years later, as the bicentennial of the War of 1812 approached, the battle had faded into obscurity. But new research and extensive archaeology finally secured state and national recognition of battle site Essex. Today, Essex is peaceful and picturesque. Iconic landmarks like the Griswold Inn the Historical Society's Pratt House and Connecticut River Museum allow visitors to step back into time in what has often been called America's perfect little town. Yet every year, Essex is reinvaded 
not by British troops, but with the sounds of fifes and drums and the lingering atmosphere of cannon fire and burning ships, reminding us all of the night the War of 1812 came up the river to a village called Pettipog. To learn more about Essex and how to experience this dynamic moment in history, visit www.battlesiteessex.org. From New York to New London, Britannia ruled the sound. With frigate sloops and men of war, they kept our shipping down. So up the creek in Pettipog, we built some privateers. But Captain Cook came up one night to burn them at the piers. Sing it, bull boys, row up the creek to Pettipog. Burn, boys, burn every ship and every log. So we sing, boys, sing to the fire and lost crawl. And the night they came to burn the privateers at Pettipog. That we were safe up here, above the Sabre Bar. But Captain Coot rode up with his Marines and Jolly Tars. They took the town, they burned the ships, stove in all our rum. Then they got back in the river just to wait for dark to come. Sing and roll, roll boys, roll up the creek to Pettipong. Burn, boys, burn every ship and every log. So we sing, boys, sing to the fire and lost rock. The night they came to burn the privateers of Pettipong. Our militia came from Killingworth, troops from New London town. Soldiers, sailors, and marines to thump the British down. But the dark of night came rolling in to cover their retreat. And we heard them cheer, we got back to the fleet. Singing, roll boys, roll up the creek to Pettipong. came to burn the, the private tears of pain. Oh.